last video, we took a look at how to download jQuery and get it running in your page. In this video, we're going to take a look at jQuery expressions and how to use selectors. jQuery expressions are made up of two main parts. The first is the selector, and the second are the methods that are called on that collection. Now you can recognize the selector part of the expression because it's called within the dollar sign function. Now sometimes you will see the dollar sign function instead written as jQuery, which is the exact same thing. The dollar sign function is just a shortcut for jQuery. Now inside the dollar sign function, we pass it a string, which is a CSS selector. In this case, we want to select all the divs with the class signup. Now what this function returns is a jQuery collection. Now on these collections, we can call methods. So for instance, on this collection, we're calling the CSS method and passing it opacity at 0 0.4. This says on the collection of all divs with the class signup, we want to set the opacity to 0.4. Now what's cool about methods is that most times they return the collection that they were called on, which means that we can call more methods on the same collection. So after we call .css, the same collection is returned, and we can call another method on it called .show. And here this will show the element in a slow animated fashion. You can see that we add one more method to add a class to it. Now when we have these long expressions, it's not uncommon to see them broken up into multiple lines. This is done by placing a line break before each new method call. And now that we have all three of our method calls on separate lines, it's a lot easier to read. We can see that for all the divs with sign up, we want to set the CSS opacity to 0.4 and show it slowly and add the class special. Now let's take a look at some of the common jQuery selectors. Now since jQuery uses CSS selectors, a lot of these will be familiar to you if you've already had some experience using CSS. But there may be some selectors that you're not used to using because they're not supported in all browsers. So let's take a look. I've added this bar to the top of our page to help us demonstrate what selectors select. When I type something into this box and hit highlight, jQuery is going to select all of the elements that match that selector and add a special class to it. This class will add a red border to it so we can clearly see what's being selected. So one of the simple selectors is just to use a tag. And just like in CSS, to select a tag name, we just type in the name of the tag. In this case, if I wanted to get a h1 tag from the page, I can type in h1 into the dollar sign function, and I'll highlight it. And you can see that only our h1 has been highlighted. Nothing else on the page has been highlighted. Now we can do that with our H2 and see that it can select multiple objects at the same time. So let me click H2, and you can see that both of our H2 tags have been highlighted. Just like in CSS, we can combine multiple selectors together by separating them with a comma. So if we want to select our H1s and our H2 tags, we can do H1, comma, H2. And when we click highlight, we can see that our H1 and both of our H2 tags have been selected. Now another selector we can use is the ID selector, and that uses the pound sign. So we use the pound sign and the ID of the element that we want to select. In this case, I have a div with the ID posts that holds all of my posts. So let's select it, and if we click highlight, we can see our div that contains all of our posts. Now this can be combined with a tag name if you want to get more specific, and say div with the ID posts. Another common CSS selector we can use is the class selector, and that's denoted with the dot. Now each one of my posts here is a div with the class post. So let's select each one of our posts by saying dot post, and when we highlight it, you can see that our jQuery collection has two items in it, this post and that post. Again, we can combine these with tags and say div dot post, and since they are divs, they'll still be selected. But if we selected spans, we would not get this selected because even though they have the class post, they're not spans. Just like in CSS, we can use spaces to denote that one selector should be the child of another selector. So let's take a look at this. So let's say I wanted to select all of the A tags within my navigation. So first, let's look at our div with the class navigation. So I select dot navigation, and we can see that our div is selected here. Now if I wanted to select all of the links inside of it, I put a space after navigation and say A. That means I want all of the A tags that are within an element with the class navigation. So when I click highlight, you can see that each one of our A tags is selected separately. J 
jQuery also has some selectors that you're probably not used to using in CSS. For instance, the attribute selector, which allows you to do things like this. One of my images has a title attribute of elephant, the others do not. If I wanted to select only the image with the title elephant, I can do that easily by saying IMG and then using square brackets and saying title equals elephant and closing the square brackets. Now when I highlight this, you can see that only one of our images has been highlighted, the one with the title elements. The others have not. jQuery also offers many pseudo selectors, which are denoted with a colon. Now some that you may be used to using in some newer CSS3 based sites is the first child selector. So our navigation is an unordered list with three LIs representing one of our links. If I wanted to select only the first link, I can do UL space LI and say first dash child. Now when I select that, I'll get only the first one. Similarly, I could do last child and it would select the last ally in the list. Another cool pseudo selector is the not pseudo selector. So I have a few different links on this page, but on my comment links, I have a special class called comment link and we can see that in our source code. Right here, we have the comments link class on our comments links. So what if I wanted to select all the comments that were not of the class comment link? So we can try using the A tag, and we'll highlight it. And we'll see that all of our links are highlighted, but we don't want these comment links. So to select all the links that are not comment links, we use the not pseudo selector. And in parentheses, we put the expression that we do not want to match. So in this case, comments link, and now it'll match all the A tags that are not with the class comments link and you can see that our comments have been deactivated. If you go to the jQuery documentation, you can see all of the selectors that jQuery allows you to use, and there are a lot of them. I urge you to check it out and see what's possible using jQuery selectors. Now that we have our elements selected, we can start manipulating them. In the next video, we're gonna take a look at the methods that jQuery provides to manipulate our elements.